So sales of water filter systems in Singapore have been climbing steadily over the years, with one company even reporting a 100% increase in unit sales year on year. To be perfectly honest, I'm actually fine drinking tap water. My wife prefers filtered water. We got this under the sink system, which I believe costs about $1,000. Now that's a whole lot of money. So in this episode of Talking Point, I want to find out if we really need these water filters. I'm starting my investigation with Joyce Lai, who is the founder of Kampung Sena, an eco-conscious charity which promotes the use of natural remedies for health and wellness. Joyce has been using water filters from as early as 1999, when she used charcoal sticks like these to purify her water. They can absorb many uh, impurity, including uh, bacteria. So this was how it all started, just using At least at Kampong Senang, that is how we started. Nowadays, we have very modern technology filter. I can show you. Yeah, yeah. And this way, see. Ah. Here is the system. All right. Yeah. The filter is actually here. There oh. are eight filters here. Eight? Yes. Wow, OK. <laughs> what does it do? The first four are reverse osmosis. Uh -huh. So using the basic ingredient, white chakra, to remove all the impurity, all the chlorine, fluoride, heavy metals. Mm -hmm. Then the last four is to add back the good thing, the essential minerals, uh -huh. like magnesium, calcium, zinc. And do you really think this is beneficial for our body? The senior, they find that they do not have to go to toilet so often, although they can drink more water. Are you saying the water is uh, well being absorbed, absorbed yes, into yes. our body? Some of them, they slim down. Uh, some of them with diabetes, they also improve. So how much does a system like that cost? About 2700 And do you feel that that is worth the money? To me, I look upon it as a responsibility to our beneficiaries because the people who come to us are either chronically ill or they are seniors who are physically weak. And even if you had to pay for it on your own at home, would you feel that this is yes. worth? Yes, I, I, I do pay for it because okay. it's important to have good water, to take good care of our health. Water that is cleaner and healthier. That is what some people believe these water filters bring us. I'm going to put these claims to the test. And I'm starting right here with Joyce's centre. I'm taking two different samples from her centre. Regular tap water and filtered water. And bringing them to the lab for testing. I want to know if filtered water truly has higher levels of essential minerals like calcium and zinc and lower levels of chlorine and fluoride, which some filters promise to remove from our tap water. Before the results are out, I'm tracking Singapore's water journey. Tap water comes to us at the turn of a faucet. But it often travels a long way to get there. From our water treatment plants, water enters a network of portable water distribution pipes, 5,700 kilometres long, to our homes and industries. While some buildings are served directly by PUB water mains, Others, like this HDB block, are served by rooftop storage tanks, where water is pumped up before flowing via gravity to our homes. So, how is our water kept clean throughout the entire process? To find out, I've arranged to meet Liu Xuan Yu. He's responsible for ensuring water quality throughout our distribution network. So why are we here at this fire hydrant? Fire hydrants like this are not just used to draw water for firefighting. PUB also uses these hydrants to collect water samples from our extensive underground pipe network oh. for water quality monitoring. Do you want to help me take a sample? Yeah, sure. Let's go for it. Oh, nice. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Okay. So this is just regular tap water, right? Yes, this is regular tap water. This is totally drinkable. Alright, we got our sample. We also routinely inspect more than 80,000 water tanks on 20,000 buildings across the island. Come, let me show you. Okay, let's go. Oh, wow, what a view. 
It is quite a view. So this whole patch that we're on is actually the water tank. That's right. We're standing right on top of the water tank. So what are we checking for up here? Over here, we want to check that the tank cover is properly blocked. We also want to ensure that there's a stainless steel bracket to properly secure the tank cover. Are we able to open it? Yep. Okay. Oh, looks a bit like a swimming pool in there. It is, right? PUB takes samples from each step of the water journey, from the source to our taps, in order to ensure that water remains clean throughout. The samples are then taken to its water quality lab, where they are tested for over 300 parameters, including pH, colour and ammonia. Singapore's tap water is recognised internationally to be one of the cleanest in the world. But why do many still seem obsessed with even cleaner, more purified water? I'll soon find out if filtered water is indeed cleaner. So we tested both tap and filtered water. What do the results tell you? I'm investigating the need for water filters. I've sent water samples from eco-conscious charity Kampung Senang to a lab for testing. I want to know if filters can really add more minerals and reduce the amount of chlorine and fluoride in our drinking water. The results are out. So you tested both tap and filtered water. What do the results tell you? Let's first look at chlorine and fluoride. Okay. As these are the two chemical of concern which the filter promises to remove. For chlorine, you can see that the concentration has actually remained the same. It is 0.1 mg per litre. So there's no significant decrease in the concentration. But if we were to look at fluoride, we do see a decrease from 0.5 to yeah. 0.1. So the reverse osmosis filter did remove uh, fluoride from the water itself. But the permissible level for fluoride in our water is actually uh, 0 0.7 milligrams per litre. Right. So as long as you do not go above that, it is safe. Some people believe that the filter will actually add more minerals into the water. Is that true? If we were to look at the results between uh, tap and filter, mm -hmm. magnesium level only went up by 1 milligram per litre. Mm -hmm. And if you look at zinc, basically there's no change to the concentration. And for calcium, there's actually a decrease from 30 milligrams per litre yeah. to almost uh, 1 milligram per litre. So if we were to add all three minerals up that we are observing in our report, it's actually a drop in uh, overall mineral contents. So in other words, this filter is actually removing more minerals from the water instead of adding minerals into the water. You are correct. So water filters may be able to remove fluoride from your water if that's what you're concerned about. But if you are looking at adding minerals into your water, well, filters may not necessarily live up to their claims. But yet, there are so many varieties of water filters in the market these days. Hmm, let's see. I'm just doing a bit of online shopping and I'm finding they have a truly dizzying array of water filters available on the market. You've got your relatively simple ones. Those are cloth filters that cost about 30 cents a piece. There are also water filter pitches. Now those go between 30 to $100. And then you've got your faucet filters which attach to your tap. Those are priced between 50 to $200. But ooh, look at this. They've got the more fancy countertop systems. Those can cost as much as $3,500. But with so much to choose from, and they all have terms like activated carbon, ion exchange, and alkaline ionizer, I, I really have no idea what they all mean. So today, I've enlisted Kwok Chen Ko to help me break it all down. Chenko runs a blog called Water Quality in Singapore and he has a special interest in water filters. You know, there are so many different types of uh, water filters out there. What's the difference between them? There are two broad categories. Okay. One group remove contaminants from the water. Uh -huh. The other group actually modify your water or add something into your water. There are two common kinds of filters which claim to modify water. Ion exchange filters and alkaline filters. Chenko is going to show me what really goes on in each of these filters. 
So what's this one that we're looking at? This one that you're looking at is mm. an ion exchange filter. It acts like a water softener. Imagine your hard water going into the filter. And what makes water hard? Well, basically, if you have calcium and magnesium ions inside your water, it contributes to the hardness. So hard water has more of this, the calcium and magnesium? Yes, that's right. Alright, how does it work? Imagine this part here is mm -hmm. your water filter uh -huh. and the yellow magnets are your ion exchange resins. Okay. Hard water goes in from the top and this is calcium. It gets captured by the ion exchange resin, releasing some of the hydrogen ions into your outlet water. So, eventually, most of your calcium and magnesium ions will be captured by the ion exchange resin and up comes soft water. The lack of calcium and magnesium ions make the water soft. Softer water is often desired by coffee enthusiasts because the lack of minerals can prevent limescale buildup from clogging your coffee machine. Some also believe that using softer water can brew a more flavorful cup of tea. Now, over here we have what we call electrolysis. It's basically used to produce alkaline water. You need an electric current to go through your water and split it. And in the process, it produces high alkaline water. If you can see, one of these electrodes has a lot of bubbles coming out where alkaline water is produced. If I put this into my electrolyzer here, you can see a deeper green which indicates mm. alkaline water according to the colour chart. Oh yeah! So it is converting the water in there by running a current through it. Yes. And alkaline water is also supposed to be beneficial for us? Yes, a lot of people do believe it's more beneficial, it's healthier. Next is the other kind of filter that is designed to remove contaminants from water, the activated carbon filter. Activated carbon is a very common component in mm. a lot of filters. Chenko proceeds to pour some blue dyed water through a coffee filter lined with activated carbon. That's the black powder you see there. You can see the water dripping out now. It's has not a, as blue. That's right. So essentially this carbon is absorbing the blue dye. Yes. And imagine the blue dye is your contaminant in the mm. water. That is what your activated carbon is doing. It's removing okay. certain pollutants. For example, solvent, chlorine, and certain chemicals, it can't remove bacteria unless it's specially designed to do mm, so. Okay. For people who are out there looking for a water filter, what should they be looking out for? First point, they must already know what they want to remove from their water or modify their water. For example, are they going to remove chlorine and fluoride? Mm. If that is the case, they should look for a water filter that can handle that particular task. Second point, a water filter which is certified by a third party, not related to any of these manufacturers ah, or retailers. Okay. My third point for consumers is to think about how often you need to change your filters. Yeah. Now, the problem is this, filters over time can actually allow bacteria to grow within them. And of particular concern would be the activated carbon because it absorbs organic matter which actually serves as food for bacteria. So uh, we are talking about bacteria growing on your filter and coming up into your water which you are drinking. Right, so if you don't change it regularly, it's like the clean water going in, getting mixed up with all the bacteria and then coming out into your cup. Yes. You know, which is even worse, right? Yes, that's right. Could bacteria really grow in overdue filters and leak into the filtered water? I need to find out. I'm collecting two samples each from five different households who drink filtered water, including my own. The filters are all multi-stage filters, which contain different types of filter medium. But they all have one thing in common. They all contain activated carbon, the one thing that Chenko has warned me about. I'm sending my samples to the lab for another test. In that particular filter, there is an additional opportunity for the bacteria to regrow. I've just found out that if we don't change our water filters regularly, bacteria can accumulate in them and contaminate our filtered water. 
So I gathered water samples from five different households who use water filters, including my own. I've taken two samples each from these households, one of filtered water and one of regular tap water. I'm sending the samples to the lab for testing today. I want to know how effective water filters really are in our homes. As we're waiting for the results, I investigate one more thing. Water filter and alkaline water companies alike advertise a laundry list of health claims. From improved gastrointestinal health to detoxification, improved skin condition, better blood circulation, and even preventing cancer. I know water is the essence of life, but can all this really be true? To find out, I'm consulting Dr. Leong Lai Ping. Dr. Leong is a food scientist. She's been looking into some of the claims companies have made ever since she took on a part-time job, selling water filters when she was still a student. So Dr. Leong, I have here a bunch of health claims that all these water treatment companies say they are water can do for you, from helping your body detox, even improve my gastrointestinal health. Is that true? According to the claims, some of them say because it is alkaline water, mm -hmm. it helps to neutralize the yeah, acid, the acid in, the in the stomach. But the thing is that the acid is there to help with digestion. If right. you neutralize it, it doesn't digest as well anymore, right? There's no reason why anybody wants to neutralize the acid in their stomach. Okay, let me ask you about this. It says it can help my body absorb water better because the water molecules are smaller. Now, the water molecules doesn't change in size whether they go through the filter or not. It's still the same size. Water is water. There shouldn't be any difference at all between filtered water or normal tap water. It will both help you to hydrate. What about this claim that it can help prevent cancer? Well, there are actually no evidence that it can prevent cancer. No evidence whatsoever. Any group of people that would benefit from drinking these treated water? So there are some water treatment system that is able to get rid of some germs. So people undergoing cancer treatment, for example, or people who are immunocompromised, who are very vulnerable, mm. there's a benefit if they take this water that can filter away the microorganisms that they wanted filtered away. So it turns out that the claims are, more often than not, just persuasive marketing gimmicks. But while it might not give me better digestion or prevent me from getting cancer, it should, at the very least, ensure that my water is free from dangerous bacteria, right? It's been a week since I dropped off my water samples at the lab for testing. And the results are out. I've also invited the households I took the samples from. Turns out, the bacteria count for tap water taken from four of the households were all under 500. Some as low as less than one. A bacteria count of 500 is the safe limit imposed by the Singapore Food Agency. But when it came to filtered water from these four households, three of them had bacteria counts that were between 9,000 to a whopping 25,400. But one household bugged the trend. Household 5's tap water had a bacteria count of 13,600. Its filtered water, a bacteria count of less than one. Dr. Guillaume Droulet spearheaded this test. He's going to help us make sense of the numbers. There are reasons to explain why you could have regrowth of bacteria in the different filters. My number is about 25,000, which is like a lot more. Yeah, that sounds pretty high. Was your filter changed recently or...? It's changed one month past the supposed guideline. So, <laughs> so you have used it longer than what yeah. the manufacturer's recommends, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, that could explain the high bacterial count. 
So the longer you keep your filter running, the higher probability that you will have a regrowth of bacteria. So it's very important to follow the schedule proposed by the manufacturers. But even then, so I actually did just change my filter about a month ago. I would have thought there should be, well, almost no bacteria since it's almost a brand new filter, right? So bacteria regrow very fast. So okay. as, as soon as you have nutrients and surface to regrow, you will have development of a biofilm. So if you look at it this way, having a filter, add one more step after the water you receive from the tap. And in that particular filter, there is an additional, basically, opportunity for the bacteria to regrow. So even when the filters are not past their due date for replacement, they could still be introducing higher bacteria counts into our filtered water. So is this bacteria harmful for us? Yes and no. Not all bacteria are bad. There are some good bacteria. If you drink probiotics, you will ingest a lot more bacteria than that. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It means that you have an increase of bacteria, meaning potentially there could be some pathogenic bacteria regrowing in your filter. Okay. If you don't have a control of this, it, it could be a problem. So in the filter, we may be collecting bacteria, both good and bad, and we just don't know which one. And you can't control it. And, we can't and this control is it. why technically the water from POB is safer because there is a control here. So the water you receive at the tap has been treated by the public utility boards and contain chlorine to forbid regrowth. The filter may remove some of this chlorine and act as a place where the bacteria can actually start regrowing. But Wendy has some unusual results. Wendy is from household five, where our tests showed that the level of bacteria for her tap water was shockingly at a count of 13,600 compared to her filtered water, which had a bacteria count of less than one. The question to ask here is, what could have created those higher presence of bacteria directly from the tap? Right. So you may consider that the, the filter here has done the job, but uh, for, for me, I will take these uh, results with a, a cautious uh, step um, and maybe start investigating to find out where the source of the issue in that case could be. Knowing these results, will you still continue using your water filter? Um, I would say yes, because the water filter makes my water taste a bit better. But definitely I would change my filter on time and also boil the water. Yeah. One last thing to investigate. The findings from Household 5's tap water. Why is the bacteria count so high? I took my findings to the PUB, who did their own tests and found the tap water taken from Household 5 had a bacteria count of less than one. PUB told Talking Point to avoid any external contamination of the water during sampling, it's standard practice for taps to be disinfected first. So the high bacteria count from our sample may have been due to contaminants in Household 5's tap, not from the water. So are water filters really necessary? Well, if you think about how rigorous our water treatment process is, the answer is no. Our tap water is perfectly safe to drink. And even though filtered water isn't a miracle cure for, say, cancer, it gives me better digestion, and some people believe it does, it could be useful for those who are vulnerable to infections. So as long as you do proper maintenance and change your filters regularly, Otherwise, this supposedly cleaner water could actually do you more harm than good.